everybody. Hi. It's Kim and Jen from Fleece and Harmony coming direct from beautiful downtown Belfast. <laughs> I just Prince realized we switched sides again. Yeah, well, that's okay. This is the correct side. Is it? Yes, because my my tooth is on this side. With all the wires that you have in your mouth, <laughs> nobody can see your tooth. I don't, wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> so. Just saying. <laughs> Um, so we're, we're absolutely delighted because we are, have a beautiful sunny day. <laughs> we don't even know why. Even though it's minus <laughs> nine degrees Celsius. It's going to be, it's not that now. I don't know. Okay. It's, it's, it's going to be plus three. Yes. Okay. So yes, that's the way it goes. Minus 11 when you wake up, plus three <laughs> in the middle of the afternoon yeah. and then minus 11 again. Yeah. And this so. is our knitting podcast. Knitting, yes. knitting, knitting. <laughs> <laughs> just saying <laughs> nobody's finding us anyway yeah they know why we're here yeah okay <laughs> so today we're recording on st patrick's day i totally forgot that all together yeah. so it's st patrick's day but you guys won't be seeing it until friday all right so we'll be able to tell you a little bit about our irish roots okay yeah Good. i've been to the seat of the of the doherty the Doherty? Know. Well, no, it's actually Doherty in oh. Donegal. Oh, and then okay. they moved to Scotland. And then Some it became Doherty? I don't know. Okay. Wait, so, <laughs> Doherty. T-A-I-G-H? Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. That's Gaelic. I know. I don't know. That he's, yeah, I don't think, yeah, I'm not sure you pronounce it that way. Probably not. Yeah. It's probably <laughs> <laughs> something. I'm just doing it sort of like. That's what it looks like. Okay. But, but maybe that's not even the same name then. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to make it up. Are we related to these people or not? <laughs> We're going to make it up as we go along. <laughs> Seriously, skeptical of this research now. All right. I, was I think it was O. Docker. <laughs> I don't know. All right. We'll get to that later. Okay, good. So today on our knitting podcast... We're going to talk about the farm, <laughs> like always, and we're going to talk about our knitting a little bit, and we've got uh, a huge shop update because yesterday, <laughs> or two days ago, was two Rowan ago. Spring Summer launch date. 2021. Yes. Not 20 slash 21. No. 2021. <laughs> 2021. So. For sure they're going to think I've been drinking. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we should get right to it. <laughs> okay, good. So, um, I, it gets kind of boring, I think, talking about the weather, but the weather, it's, it's spring, then it's winter, winter then it's spring, then it's winter. We've got mud in the parking lot. Then we got frozen. <laughs> ice. I have to wear crimpons. To yeah. To we short. put the, we put the thing across so that you can't get stuck in the mud. We take the thing off. Yeah. We put the thing across. We take it off. Yeah. Put it across. Just as freezing, thawing, freezing, thawing, freezing, yeah, it's thawing. A, it's a bit nuts. So, um, so that's good. The, the, Oh, uh, but if you're by and the things across, it doesn't mean we're closed. No. Some poor woman right. went back to Summerside. Oh, really? Really? Oh. She thought we were closed. Oh. Because of the thing okay. that we just don't want to have to get a tow truck for you. Even though we had the sign that said open. I know, that. but oh, people okay. leave those uh, yeah. slackers okay. around here. They're open flags out and they're not yeah, really open. Well, and that's then, happened to us before too. That's that's in this like, case, right. it wasn't that. No. So, so oh. I think maybe it was Cornwall, but she drove oh. really far oh, and no. then turned around and left. Sorry. I know I was, she was trying to talk about, to me about yarn and I was like, I still can't believe that you left. Oh. <laughs> but she came back the next day. Oh. Okay. I know. Wow. Well, thank you very much uh-huh. for supporting us, even though we looked so like we didn't want any customers. We didn't want you to go up to your wheel wells yeah. in mud. Ken has actually had to pull people out with the pickup That's right. before. So it's, it's <laughs> That's really. That's why the thing goes across. We didn't used to close it, but yeah. after you had to pull uh, some kind of, you know, regular little sedan out of the mud hole with his pickup then now we we it's just not a service he's willing to provide well it's not (laughs) great for people's for their car either so (laughs) anyway so that's uh so that's what we're dealing with now and we're two weeks away from shearing so the sheep are they're in and out so if it's it was uh like blustery winter minus feels like minus 18 and whatever so they're all in then they go out and they're laying in the sun with their faces up to the sun which like they do and they don't know what's going on they and they've got their full fleece they're so they're, they, yeah they've been they don't, care. they don't care horses don't care they're all fluffy yeah so uh, we're the only ones who care yeah 
<laughs> shedding season is also around the corner yes. horse, for horse people. Yes, so that's always interesting. I'm sure it started already. If you took a brush, then yes, you'd probably did, get plenty. Did. I did. Yeah. Yeah, it's already coming out. So, uh, so that's it. Okay, good. So we're going to can we do can we do fo's first? I already have mo hair. Um, yep. Yeah. Sure. I know. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not wearing any knitwear because <laughs> I was hoping to be able to wear that. Not happening. Fine. So I finished rain. Mm-hmm. It's and, really nice. Uh, there's a lot of learnings about knitting a unisex pattern. I am also knitting a unisex pattern. Yeah. So this ought to be a real whiz banger of an episode yes. then. Okay, yes. great. <laughs> so I, just to give a little bit of background, uh, we've talked about it before, but I knit this as a, a sample for the store was what the original thing was. So I just knit the the size um, small. I think there's extra small and then small. So I knit, knit the second size. I'm by no stretch of the imagination a size small. So I thought for sure it wasn't going to fit because that shouldn't, it shouldn't have fit me really. And then um, I knit my swatch with the needle suggested and I didn't like the fabric because I thought it was too loose and, and drapey. I wanted it to be a little bit more dense. So I went down a whole half millimeter on the needle sizes and I was knitting happily along thinking that Jennifer was going to have the sweater. I do still get to borrow if wear it if I want to. Though. Yeah, it'll be in the shop as well so people okay. can come and see it. So, so the learning is that you can say your sweater is a unisex or your pattern is a unisex pattern, but it does fit differently than a pattern that's fit for either a man or a woman's shape. Like it's, it's, I'm in the same boat. Yeah. So it's a, it's, they, it is a different fit as it turns out happily for me, it fits perfectly, perfectly. So of course there's no waist shaping because there wouldn't be waist shaping, um, in a unisex sweater. But, and because the motif is so big, I couldn't fudge waist shaping because I didn't want to go into where, mm, you know. the legs would be under your yeah, armpit. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I just went, went with it. And, um, I don't know, I sewed it up. I finished sewing it up this morning, actually. And I tried it on and I actually couldn't believe that it fits me perfectly. It's so nice. It's really nice. And normally, I have to say as well, I'm not a necessarily a big fan of the drop. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at that, yeah. yeah. But it's not, it's like a modified drop? Yes. Okay. Yes. So there is some shaping there, and it's a modified drop, and I like it. Mm -hmm. It's not like the really dramatic. I mean, it looks one. like a sweatshirt, right? Sort of. Ish. Yeah. Like shape, sweatshirt yeah. shape. Yeah. A very nice so. sweatshirt, but. Yeah. It's not, you're not going to wear it with a skirt. I might wear it with everything. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no waist shaping. Okay, yeah. very good. Yeah. So I do have one little problem with it, though. I had to do all my makeup for the video after I put the sweater on because my bind off is too tight oh, around the neck. You cannot redo it. So I think um, I'm going to see how it goes. It's already kind of stretched out a little bit. You can bit do Jenny's I think... super stretchy bind off. Yes. The JSSBO. Yes. But I'm a little bit torn because I can get it on my head. But I don't, um, I don't want it to look sloppy around the top of the neck either because it does actually look very neat. Mm -hmm. Maybe the JSSBO, but it's very elastic though. Okay, so it's I'll not have to try. loose so much as it's stretchy, right? Okay, yeah, super stretchy. Okay, <laughs> not not Jenny's super loose bind off. Okay, <laughs> thanks for the clarification. It would be good to try it and see. Yes. So I think I will, uh, I think I'll do it because what bind off method did you use? Just, just one use, stitch over the other. Yeah. Okay. I just use the regular, I don't okay. do any, I don't know fancy cast on or fancy bind off. So <laughs> fancier than I do. But. No. So anyway, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, again, this is made in the alpaca classic held singly but just making the needle size a little bit smaller so the rib was done in a 2.75 and a 3.25 for the yeah. for the uh the body of it yeah i can't yarn. wait to wear it yeah it's really nice hopefully my big head fits through the that's what i neck. i was gonna mention but i about the, about the bind off it might be a problem uh, <laughs> okay. well i always put my clothes on before my makeup because 
I would always get on everything. Yeah, except it's white. Yeah, I know. It's all that was it. I just don't like it on anything anyway. Anyway, so that's it. So after I um after I saw this, I went in to work this morning and I ordered more of the snowflake white because I think maybe some people might want to I bet it. It's, it's it really was nice. we couldn't order that for a while. Yeah, so it's exactly. not that we forgot about it. No, and we had wasn't. a couple of kits, but the kits were hard to manage and mm-hmm. stuff, but it's uh um, anyway, the kids are still up though, I think. Uh, I don't know. I think they're still listed. Oh, okay. Anyway, it wasn't it wasn't hard to manage other than we couldn't get enough white. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was hard, that made it difficult. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right, good. All right. So that's rain. Okay. And so. I just I'm still working on um Paisley, but there's literally nothing to show. It's now instead of this big, it's that big. Like it's it's now although I finished my increase back increasing, so now I'm heading for the sleeve. But now you're going to be going more whole hog on that, possibly. Yes. But you also have something else planned. Yes. Now we've got all these new row and patterns to look at. It's yes. going to be a little bit dicey about staying focused. Speaking of which, can I talk about my flax now? Yes. Okay. So speaking of staying focused, you know you have a short attention span when you can't decide if you're knitting the sleeve or the body. So, <laughs> so I have some of the body done and some of the sleeve done. But really I wanted him to try it on. Oh, you did that? that on purpose? Yep. Oh, okay. Well, I wanted to see because, listen, I got lots of advice, and I've knit all this. Remember, I just had the swatch two weeks ago. Right. I thought I'd be done, and I would be done. Honest mm-hmm. to gosh, I would almost be done, except for the sleeves. But, and y'all had some really great pointers on different stitch patterns and whatnot. And the reverse stockinette people are probably going to roll their eyes and say, I told you, but... <laughs> Nobody mentioned that I have to knit two rows of garter for every one row of stockinette length. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so compressed. And so I took, I actually found um, this person called Knitting Roundup, is it? I'll put the, I'll put the uh, credit below. But uh, you can see here, so she knit uh, a swatch in stockinette and a swatch in garter in the exact same gauge, exact same number of rows. Look how much shorter it is. Mm. I did not know this. Mm-hmm. People think we're so experienced and we would know this. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever knit anything in garter. Yeah. No idea. Not a clue. Never knit a whole project in garter before. So what happened was my raglan increases, obviously the slope of them, because the rows were so compressed, I'm increasing every second row. The raglan line is more like this than like this. Oh. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You just look so concerned, like this is just not good. You're like, "Mm -hmm. oh boy. Um, Now, when he puts it on, it doesn't it doesn't look out of shape with his shoulder. Okay. But as you can see, and I don't know, people who have knit more top down raglan, you can see this comes off the body at quite an angle. This raglan sleeve here. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it was a set in sleeve, it would be sewn on like this. Right. Right. Yeah. Like this, yeah. You know, well, that's slightly dropped, no, but, but like this, here. yeah, yeah. So, is this a raglan thing? Because what happens is, unless he wants to walk around like Gumby, <laughs> when he puts his arms down, there's a bunching. So I'm trying to decide if that's just because the raglan increase line is flatter, making it well, obviously that makes it worse. If it were down here, the sleeve mm. would be down here. Can I feel it? Yeah. So I'm going to try to block this problem out of it by stretching. Oh, so it's still soft. I was wondering if it's because the the stiffness like of the decrease isn't, but that's not it because it's, it's no. oh, there's a little bit of a bulge there. Eh? I don't know. I would have no, I'm not a real raglan expert by any, I well, think I'm, I'm asking. So I'm going to try to, um, yeah, there's maybe a little bit of a mistake there. <laughs> That's why you watch, folks. <laughs> to see when Jennifer discovers the mistake. <laughs> there's actually, there is a, there's a double stock in that little blip in there. Oh, boy. I get confused okay. when I'm doing increases. Yeah. Okay. I'm I hot now. I actually have some, we've got a ton of mohair on the, on the. Yeah, uh, we're all <laughs> stuffy. Okay. So I don't, I think that our sleeves are just coming off at a, at a broader angle because of the. But I would say if you want to, I mean. I might be tempted to wash and block what you have so far because our yarn does change. But I want to get longer, not wider. It usually gets wider and shorter. Yeah, but I'm 
who knows how it's going to perform with the... The yeah, garter. so I mean, right, you are. I'm definitely gonna do that. Yeah, do just I to wanna, be sure. I mean, to be honest, and now I found it was, it's possible I'll redo it <laughs> because truthfully, going by you know this, I, I should have introduced this chat by saying, remember how we were like, who cares about or like who? How can you fix row gauge? Blah blah blah. Well, just... in this case, like I'm supposed to be increasing every second row. Yeah, but with this row gauge, it every so fourth row. yeah, it should be at least every fourth row. Uh-huh. It looks a little narrow under the under the arm. Like but it fits somehow where okay. like this doesn't quite look long enough to me. Um well I'm gonna That's your point, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess block it. And yeah, then have just them try wash it on. And block it. Yes, because you will really won't know. Plus so, I don't know how how garter relaxes. Yeah. And I know now why at least some couples break up from the sweater curse. The guilt. <laughs> That he's going to feel when he watches this episode is substantial. Just... <laughs> I keep saying, like, don't feel bad. We don't need it to be quick. We, we need, need it to, to be perfect. perfect. For the podcast. It's yeah. I mean, <laughs> there, you know, like now I found a mistake. Oh, uh, I. I mean, I might redo it. I mean, have I really done that Stashed. much? It's not that fast in garter. It'd be bloody fast in stock and as, as a very smart viewer once remarked, if you don't like it now, you're not going to like it 10 inches from now. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what part of the problem is? It's when you know you could make it better. Yes. Like that, if that I, is the problem. <laughs> that is the problem. <laughs> it's not that he cares or that it has no. to be perfect, but it's just like when you're when you're us anyway, when you know you could make it better. Yeah. That's the problem. If I call him and tell him I broke the whole why thing I took out, Paisley he will apart. lose his mind. I know, and that was way more work. Yes, that was I just <laughs> barely caught up to where I was. But I'm beginning to feel like I knit everything twice, but that's not true. I only took out a little bit of the Galbraith. I was back in by three. That was like three hours of yeah. rehearsal. Yeah. I mean this well, is like a week. Yes. And besides that, we had this conversation before, is that we go through we it never, every time. We never want I never wanted to rip anything out. I just kept going because you just wanted to get it done. But you, the time that you spend and the money you spend on buying good quality products to knit with then it's worth it to have something that's going to last like that wool sweater will last for 40 years well that's what i told him too i said yeah. like you'll have it forever so yes. i mean it's not a you know you get one <laughs> no, i'm just kidding <laughs> um <laughs> but like i think that's what's causing the bunching is yeah. the weird angle yeah and you know having said all that the stockinette being in the middle at such a looser gauge, it's almost like I'd only have to knit one row of stockinette for every two rows of garter. So that's not going to work out super well either. And I was racking my brain saying like, mm. can I go down a needle size for the stockinette section? Can I, like, how can I adjust for that? I can't think of a way in the round. Is there a way mm. I can knit this in a smaller needle size? I don't know. I would have to think about it. Think on it. You and how did you handle your um your garter? Excuse me, your garter in the round. Uh, doing no way. It's got a just, little seam underneath. Okay, so yeah, you're just doing a like a joggy. Oh, okay. Fish. So are you twisting the yarns when you come to I'm them? I'm trying not to. No, but I'm asking. Is that how you link them together, or are you? Doing I'm just like... alternating, and yeah. Okay. All right. Just like. Well, because I'm also alternating. Mo I've alternated most of the time. Okay. I don't have two balls on here right now. I kind of like knit with one for a bit and then throw it on okay. on. Because between the alternating and the switching from garter to... Yeah. It gets a bit messy. Complicated. Yeah. Um, but it's perfectly under the arm. So that's not going to yeah. show. Yeah. So the other thing I could do then is try to get row gauge by going up a needle size and then adjusting the size I make. Yes. And then it won't take me as three times longer right. to knit. Yes, because it's a row gauge that's important yeah, in this one. in this one. Yeah. And then I'll be done this in a few days. Right. Because I'm knitting to beat the band. Like, yeah. I've never knit so hard on anything in my life, and I'm not really getting very far. Like, the different... It's like the, the row gauge was meant to be 24, I think, yeah. and it's 32. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a Ouch. Lot. Yeah. Yeah. Eight rows for every four inch extra for every four inches. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. 
Okay. So, so I, stay tuned next episode <laughs> for Rip and... <laughs> he thought he was going to be able to skate in it this year. I don't think that's well, happening. Well, the way the weather's going, <laughs> our only solace might be that it could be minus eighteen June fifth. Yeah, January um, is coming. <laughs> January is coming. Yeah. I'm not sure about outdoor skating, but yeah, the color is certainly nice. indoor skating. Definitely looks like chain mail. Yay! You know what? I fixing the row gauge is the way to fix it. Yeah, and then figure out the stitch gauge and make the size that he needs. Yes. Plus, that'll make it look more chain y too. And it'll be like, uh oh, nobody. I'm not even. Gonna <laughs> Do you want to start taking it out? I would like. <laughs> it'll be out. It'll be. It'll be. By the time I go to bed tonight, that'll be ripped out, guaranteed. <laughs> That's a way better way to do it, and yeah. it'll be an interesting... I mean, this is a journey, right? Like, does anyone every, care? He's going to feel project. terrible. Well, My birthday's coming up. There's an excellent opportunity to make up for it. Him? Make yeah. up for it? <laughs> okay. That's the way to fix it. Oh, uh, the, the trouble it's causing? Yeah. Or the sweater? Well, the whole <laughs> thing. Like, just go with the row gauge. Yeah. Yes. No, not the birthday. <laughs> Like I think, and it'll it'll take me half the time to get back to where I am. And now I found a mistake in my raglan increase because you know it, the problem is is like I I have said oh I have two weeks I can knit a flax in two weeks. Normally I would be able to knit yeah. a flax in two weeks. Yeah, I, seriously. I mean, think about that. I'd be done the yeah. body like for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's been crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I I felt you know I wasn't. It's not my best work because I did let go of a few things I normally would have gone back and fixed because it was taking so much longer than I thought it should that I was in a little bit of a rush with it oh. um, because I knew I wanted to start spring stuff. But I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redo it. He's going to lose his mind. <laughs> He's going to feel so bad. But Don't it's feel ex- bad. It's, it, it's exactly what you said, though. Can you just... It's just not that simple. <laughs> but I love how it looks. Yeah. So I do want to do... I do want to make this design. Right. But I'm going to do it with a better row gauge. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. that, I won't have to worry about the raglan increase no. angle and the sleeve and the bunching. And yeah. there was a little bit of a panic where I got the wrong chest size and we thought it was a 42, but it was really the 43. So then I went up because I panicked. It just, oh boy. Yeah. I think you almost have to knit everything twice. Somebody wrote that. They're like, I knit everything twice. I knit it once and then I knit it properly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, well, then that person suffers is the same thing from the same yeah. thing we do. You know you can do better. Yeah, and if it was an established pattern with the appropriate gait, like, I didn't know this. Yeah. Now I know. Yeah. So well, when you're doing, and, the... and now you all know, when you're doing raglan increases, the row gauge is actually really important because it determines the angle that the mm-hmm. sleeve falls into the sweater. Who yeah. knew? You do now. <laughs> <laughs> and now, so do all of you. Yeah. So you're welcome. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I'll stay with my set-in sleeve. I mean, that's why we're here. Mm-hmm. Um... But that's what I'm going to do because, and now not only do I not feel bad about ripping out, I'm actually excited to see how that works yes. because let me tell you something. When I got to the end of the raglan increases, it said knit two rows even before you separate or until you reach nine oh. and a half inches or whatever. Two rows even? I had to knit like 32 rows even. Oh. Like it was so far yeah. off. Yeah. Like two rows even, I was supposed to be done. I was knitting for three days oh, after that. Yeah. Like it's so just, just, just yeah, do okay. The gauge thing. okay. There, that's settled. And I get to do it with a bigger needle, so yeah, it'll go. You like by knitting with big needles. Bob's your uncle, and I don't think he's a really thick, bunchy sweater guy anyway. No. He probably wants something a little finer. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Everybody's happy. <sighs> I'm glad we sorted that all out. Yeah. All right, <laughs> I have another whip. <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> I took time to swatch something. Mm-hmm. So. Should we show the book first, or do we want to stay in order? Well, I mean, I'm going to show this pattern, swatch, and then then we'll we'll segue into the collection it comes from. Yeah. Okay. So I'm knitting something from the Rowan uh, Spring and Summer lineup out of this lovely book, which we're going to do a slideshow on shortly. And this is shortly in this video. Yeah, shortly yeah. in this video. <laughs> this is called Essential Brights, and mm-hmm. it's a it's a pattern collection by Quail Studio. Mm-hmm. And this little confection on the front here is knit completely in raspberry or, or popcorn stitch. Oh, yeah? yeah? Check it out. Yeah. Imagine how long that would take. I don't know. Is popcorn stitch long? Yeah, because you're, you're making a bobble. It's all bobbles. Yeah. It's fun. Sounds like something that would be right <laughs> up my street. I love it. I don't love it in the white, yeah. but I love it. Is that in lace? Uh, 
It's not lace. It's all baubles. No, no, fine lace. Oh, I don't know. The yarn? Oh, okay. But anyway, it. so we're going to show uh, all the designs that are in this. I have two designs planned um, out of this book. And the first one is called Candy, which is this thing here that we're showing a picture of right now. It's just like candy. And I'm super in love with it. Mm -hmm. And so I swatched. I got Gage. Perfect. Now, I was going to just steam... Steam block it. Right. Because two, if this is two strands of Kid Silk Haze with one strand of fine lace. Mm -hmm. Both gorgeous yarns. Like, I'm so excited. I thought, how exquisite is this going to be? Um, so this is, uh, you, you, it's with um, Candy Girl. Candy Girl, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have the right combination here, but Just these all swatch. go together to form the stripes. Yeah. The various, it's kind of like shading. Right. Right? So there's probably... This is behind more than one of the Kitzel right. Clay's okay. colors, but it makes a different effect. And then there's a red in here. I mean, just looking at this yeah. makes me happy. If I never cast this on and I just put these on my bedside table, <laughs> I would probably be almost as happy as if I had the sweater. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm a pink girl. I, but and this is the ruby, yeah, uh, fine lace, right? Yeah, I, I'm. This is a really nice color. <sighs> like I think it I would look good even. on me. Yeah. I can't even with how excited See, I, I am my, about this. My British red. I know. It's nice. Lipstick. <laughs> Looks very good. I cleaned the lens so that it showed up well before oh. we started recording. Okay, so this is all goes into this mm -hmm. thing. So I thought, I don't really want to wet two strands of Kid Silk Haze and wet block it. So I steam blocked my swatch because you recall from my Galbraith, I got to the end and then it said, iron it. Don't wet block it and then I was like ah my gauge will be all off I did end up wet blocking that one yeah because I needed length I mean you have to wash your no sorry that point. was the black sunset one that I was that I only had to iron okay anyway you do have to wash at some point truth yeah so I measured my gauge after steaming and it was it, my stitches were too tight and I was like that's really unusual you're usually <laughs> for me yeah so then I got nervous <laughs> so then I thought you know what I'm gonna wet it just to see and when I wet it it came out perfectly and this pattern and the size I'm going to make is going to have like 13 to 14 inches of ease because <laughs> it's like a really generous mm -hmm. and I want the ease this time mm -hmm. like I've eased myself out of ease on a number of patterns Sunday cardigan <laughs> and I'm thinking this time I'm going whole hog if the thing comes out like a bathrobe I don't care yeah. I want the ease like mm -hmm. I want it to be that big squishy voluminous. blankety voluminous right. confection so I I wet it and now I have gauge. Okay. It's a very loose fa mm -hmm. fabric. It's it'll a go big needle that you use with it. Six too, and a half. Six and a half with that fine yarn. Yeah, so. it'll go really quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think by next episode I'm going to be working on this and the new version of that. You're right. I'm excited about that now. Okay, good. So this is uh, I'm going to cast this on soon too. Mm -hmm. Once I break it too. The boyfriend that the. <laughs> The sweater's being restarted. He's going to be amazed. No one, no one watching is surprised. <laughs> it's just the way it is. And you're right. It's yeah. like 40 years of sweater. Yeah. I mean, I did suggest maybe he could work out more and that it might fit better, but I don't think oh, that's boy. the answer. <laughs> I don't think that's the answer. There's so many things that come to mind after that. But... Okay. Yeah, no, that's not the answer. Okay. Anyway. So candy. So this is what I'm doing. So I have other knitting plans. So I'm going to do a little wee slideshow now of the other things that I've selected from Rowan Spring and Summer 2021 Okay. Um, to knit and give you the names of the patterns. And some of them are individually available. A lot of them aren't, yeah. um, but we certainly have the books for them all. Right. So we need to maybe clarify, clarify that for people too, because when they're asking about patterns, I right. think we've said this before. That when a pattern is in the magazine, the numbered magazine, it is only available in the magazine. You can't buy it separately. So True also for the Quail Studio books, like the one right. I just showed. Right. I don't yeah. is that is that for all of them or Well, I don't know. Case, this one is not available. Yeah. So sometimes that. sometimes the only way to get the pattern is to get the book. Right. For sure with the Rowan magazine, that's the way it gets yeah. you. They don't offer Always. PDF uh, right. patterns. 
So it's always like that. And, um, and then other, so when other PDF patterns are available separately, we will stock them. Right. For, you can purchase them through our website yeah. and we'll send you the downloads or whatever. But when they're not on, when they're not, um, uh, when they're not available, there's nothing we can do. We can't, right. we can't get them. They're right. Not, but not anything we're knitting, if it's available individually and we can get it, we'll let you know at the time yeah. when we list That's it. Right. So let's just go watch my little spring summer plan, not including the flags. Okay. Uh, and uh, then we'll do one for you. Okay. <laughs> So that's my spring summer knitting plan. So that should take me to the fall launch of next year. That's my of plan. 2022. <laughs> no. 21, 22. No, no, no. 21, 22. Yeah. It will be 21, 22. No, no. It'll be 2022. 2022? Yeah. Is next year. <laughs> but the fall will be 2021. 21, 22. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be 21, 22. 21 slash 22. Right. It could be 21, 22 if I <laughs> knit them all twice. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now you you have a knitting plan as well. Yes. Somewhat obviously less well thought out than mine or you're, you're not, you don't really seem particularly prepared for this feature. <laughs> but we'll show uh, and list the patterns. Yes. I have your... a couple patterns. Yes. I I have a couple of patterns, but we're not showing one of the books that I'm, one of the patterns. Not today, I'm but using. I'm still going to yeah. show it. Oh, okay. We'll show All the right. book later. So you'll get a preview of a Yeah, this, a, is, just your, this is just your fun knitting plan. Because okay. we put up the slideshow of the magazine, they were like, all I could think of is what's Jen going to knit? What's yes. Kim going to knit? Okay, so okay. So we're going to that excitement. <laughs> okay. So yes, there's several projects that I have <laughs> yes. my eye on. As what well. will Jen be re-knitting four times? Or right. what will Kim be re-knitting four times? <laughs> How many times did you do the motif? Uh, I no, I caught the mistakes. But you did it, it part of it three times. When I was way down here, <laughs> yeah, I had to take out like this section, but I didn't yeah. have to go all the way back. Right. I did a well, the first time I did a lifeline, but right. with this yarn you don't need a lifeline. Right. Okay. So it was three three times from here to here. Right. Still. And then after that, it all it went together. Smooth. But <laughs> I took it out when I wasn't after you had the right happy kind of with it. <laughs> number of stitches. And I want there was one more comment that I wanted to make about this because I know everybody well not everybody but people are wondering like because now if you haven't been following us from before I'm doing everything two at a time now mm -hmm. sleeves two at a time I do the front and the back two at a time I did this this even with this motif two at a time I can't I I cannot tell you the amount of time that it saves when you're sewing up when you do it two at a time because how's that because the sleeves it doesn't matter because you're just joining the both ends of each, okay. each this sleeve is fascinating yes. I can hardly wait to hear yes so and i do mattress <laughs> stitch not back stitch but um whenever you've got two pieces that you knit it separately Oh, if it's and, a measurement. Yeah. yeah. If it's a measurement, you don't always have the exact right. number of rows. I count usually when it comes to that. <laughs> I know. No, like as I go. Oh. Like, yeah. No, I, I barely can remember <laughs> to click the row counter when I actually do need to count. Yeah. So anyway, did it get two at a time? I So the way I put the sweater together, which I guess is the way most people do, is I touch the sleeves first. And I leave all of this open, and I sew the the sleeve in one seam. Okay. So it's actually two seams, but I sew sew from the cuff to the to the underarm in case something doesn't sometimes quite match. Sometimes those are the instructions. Like sometimes yes. they tell you. I to think do that's it that mostly. Way. The, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I but the, it's all one seam open. Then I sew from the cuff here, and then from the cuff on the bottom, right. up, so that if there's any kind of little knobbly, it goes in couple, your armpit. It's in your armpit, and not right. not down at the bottom okay. of the of the sweater. And so I was doing it at six o'clock this morning in bed. 
So not even flat on it because I usually mm. do my mattress. Because you know for sure wherever you go, you're at the opposite because the exact same number of rows are yeah. there. So when yeah. you're sewing a, a seam like this on the side, when you're putting two pieces of knitting together, you take two legs from one side and two legs from the other. I just made sure that I was not splitting like one of the V's or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I just, you didn't have to, and it was perfect mm -hmm. because of course it's all part of the yeah. same knitting. Another good tip. Yeah. Uh, maybe because for my cardigan, I'll do the sleeves two at a time. That's not that difficult. Well, the sleeves two at a time, you have, it's because you're joining both sides of the same piece anyway. You st you have the same number of rows. No, but, but like it goes just, faster. Yeah. It does go faster. It's more efficient because your head is my in hand one. at it. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but for, for the front and back, that was a benefit that I really didn't understand that I was going to be able right. to... It just went really fast. And normally when you're doing the two pieces together, when I, I like sewing, I've said, so it doesn't really bother me, but you've had, I've had to sew, look to see like how mm -hmm. much does it look like it's even, mm -hmm. then back it out sometimes. So I and, pin it. Do you not pin it to help with that? I didn't. I didn't okay. pin it. Okay. I think Andrea pins it. Yeah. Okay. You can tell Andrea is like the knitting <laughs> goddess. <laughs> Like Andrea <laughs> pins hers. Okay. <gasps> Just like sewing, right? Yeah. But it's the same. I knew it was the same. No, no, in this case. But yeah. when I, so I, maybe, I pin. Maybe you don't have to pin it then. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't. I'm just saying pinning it will help if yeah. you don't want to get out of whack. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. It will. Okay, so we're anyway, let's go show your knitting plan. Okay. Your spring summer knitting plan. Here you go. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. So everybody wanted to know what our plans are. This is going to be hilarious because we never plan this far ahead. Like no. it'll be really interesting to see in September where we're at. Mm -hmm. And I still have Flat Rock, Teradel, and my Solman sweat uh, slippers not done. All right. Or is what is that the right name of the sweat slippers? Anyway, <laughs> I have a pair of slippers, a hat, and a and another sweater that I do have to finish. Wow. I feel like I have extra time in there. Oh, okay. But sure. nothing else. <laughs> sure. For real. You're drawing the line there. I'm drawing the line at the eight projects I just right. listed between right. now and September. Okay. Great. Some of them are smaller. <laughs> this one's going to go fast. Yes. Okay. I'm just <laughs> see where we're at. Okay. Who are you trying to convince? <laughs> I have no idea. No. <laughs> Okay, I just want to get to the mall. So, um, the first one I'm starting, which I I'll, I'll start right away. Okay. Probably I'll do the swatch tonight actually okay. because uh like literally, I mean this has just been completed. So, and I'm sticking to my guns about having a an easy project and something that's a little bit right. more challenging or whatever. Right. So, my easy project is going to be the first picture that you showed, which is the Madeline. Yes. Okay. Yes, except I got in here and I realized I pulled the wrong, I grabbed the wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll show the main color. Yeah, okay. so the main color is Nectar okay. in Kid Silk Haze. It's okay. a Madeline sweater, Okay. which it's was the Madeline. first picture, picture that's in my slideshow. In your slideshow. Okay, yeah. got it. And, <laughs> okay. And <laughs> the, I'm finding it. You go ahead. Okay. So the contrast with this is Bark, which is like a chocolatey brown. And I just had to, yeah, it's so cute. It's uh -huh. nice. And uh, with the little, like, what do you call those sleeves? The, when it doesn't, it only goes down to your... Bracelet length? Bracelet length. It's not mm, even, it's I not don't even. think. It's not even. It's like three quarter. quarter. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Madeline by Galena Carroll. Yes. Okay. So that's going to be 69. Yeah. Not available individually. No. Got to buy the magazine together. Right. 
Two at a time. Two <laughs> strands at a time. Bark and nectar. Okay. So. Beautiful. Yeah. So, so that, that you're starting with that. I'm starting with this. Yeah. Redoing the flax. You're working on the paisley. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Don't know when I'm going to get that flat rock done. But I am going to get it done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to farm that out to somebody. Yeah. Okay. So... I think we've covered the the, <laughs> the basics of our knitting situation. Oh, I am gonna knit something else. Okay. Yes. Is that now? We can. We can do it now, or we can do it after the shop update. We'll do it after the shop. Update. Okay. Okay. So the shop update is it's Rowan Spring Summer, twenty twenty one. Yeah. And uh, I already posted a slideshow of the Rowan magazine as a little teaser mm-hmm. on Monday when it launched, but we'll show it again here yep. in case you missed it. So let's go look at all of the designs. I have to say that you've been getting a lot of compliments on your choice of music. Yes. I was very disappointed there was no music behind the slideshow with the magazine. <laughs> was there not? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so clearly that was a mistake. I put some. Did you? I was it, I was shocked that it there didn't, wasn't. It didn't come through then. No. Should I redo it? Well, you're going to have it in here anyway, so. I picked music. I spent 25 minutes on it. <laughs> it didn't come through? Well, I t- looked at it in two different places and there was no music. Oh, weird. I yeah. spent quite a long time on it. Oh. Like I went through and oh. picked something. Okay. I was in a bit of a rush that day. All right. <laughs> so now <laughs> let's watch the version with music. <laughs>
great. So that was lovely. So music. that's me. <laughs> while you were watching we that, while I mean, you were watching that, watching that. that. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you know, you know, obviously know more about this than I do. But sometimes music that you think is free to use, right, is not always right. right? You yeah, get caught like that one yeah. other time. So it might they be... may have removed my music. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I'll go check the raw file when I when I get yeah. off here. I'm also partially losing my mind. So <laughs> I, I mean, but I did spend time selecting a piece of music. Did I remember to attach it to the video file? <laughs> That's questionable, but I will be able to find out. Well, what you chose this time is lovely. <laughs> Assuming they've just heard it. Yes. yes. Okay. So now we talked about this during my uh, whip right. section, but let's go take a look at these patterns, Essential Brights, because I also had a lot of fun picking the music for this slideshow, <laughs> which hopefully you'll also hear. Yeah. Because, you know, it's so cheery and upbeat. It's beautiful. This is a it's really sunshine, fun ray of sunshine, eh? I, yeah, like there's a, I would knit everything in here. Like it's a really nice collection. Yeah. So let's go look at it. And again, they're not available individually, so you have to get the book. But you, if you could only pick one thing from here, you're not even trying. <laughs> it's totally worth it. All right, let's go watch this with music. All right, so that's fun, and that's just like a big popsicle on a summer <laughs> yeah. summer day. I love it. I wouldn't yeah. do the popcorn one in white. That's the only color choice I'm not crazy about. Yeah. I mean, I love bright colors. Everybody knows that. Okay. I, I should tell you what I'm thinking about doing that not related to any of this. Okay. <laughs> tangent, tangent warning. <laughs> okay. As you know, and I've mean, talked about this ever since I saw it in Magazine 64, that Rosso... Um, yes. cardigan that in liqueur yeah. that I wore. Somebody just bought the yarn for I that know. this week. Okay. Yeah. I'm so it's really, really, really nice. However, there's a yarn, another color of Kid Silk Haze that I think I'm gonna use. Oh. What is it? It's Serenity. It's like a okay. beautiful blue. blue ah, sky. it's that blue I dyed you that lace yarn yes. in that time. Yes, I think I'm gonna do it in that. Fun. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Do it. Because for me, I love the liqueur. I would wear it all the time, but it's very predictable for me to, you, mm -hmm. to make that. Yeah. But this blue is just, I was rearranging the shelves yeah. the other day. Well, so when we come what, back, if you decide to do that, we should bring that yarn I dyed that time yeah. and see how close they are. Yeah. I love that color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do it up. Okay. Okay, good. That so, might be a drip. Okay. Yeah, that's a drip. Okay. We've completely overwhelmed everybody now. Okay. Okay, so as part of our spring-summer plan, we also have started stocking two new yarns. Right. Summer yarns. Mm-hmm. Do you call them summer yarns? I think yeah. they're summer well, yarns. Yeah. Okay. So we have Island Blend Fine. Yes. So true to what our strategy has always been, we just brought a selection of colors and there's a lot of muted colors in this collection. We I happened to put in the brights because we were kind of in a bright and essential they look bright on camera. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's why. <laughs> and so, but we have every shade that they make. I've been dying stock. to get this since we started with Rowan. Yeah. So Island Blend Fine is a blend of wool, seventy percent wool, um, Falkland Island 
I, Falkland Islands fine merino, fifteen mm-hmm. percent silk and fifteen percent baby alpaca. It's really nice. It's very nice. It's uh, it's fifty grams for one hundred and eighty yards. Soft, but has and a bit squishy, of body. But does feel like it would be light enough for summer, even though it's wool. Yeah. That's what I'm trying toiling with. It must be the silk. Yeah. In it that's making it feel like it wouldn't you wouldn't be sweltering in it. That's right. what I'm trying to figure out. Right. It feels very nice. It's like a beautiful spring yarn. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, neither of us have anything planned for with this. Three season yarn, I guess yeah. is what you would call it. For this season, mm-hmm. right? None of I don't think any of the things I picked are out of this. Okay, well maybe we'll find something. Just add it to the list. <laughs> Anyway, it's a really, really nice yarn. Um, it's listed now, mm-hmm. and this is totally new to our shop. Yeah. And I'm loving it. really these, excited about it. This, this color theme, we're just going to keep going. There's pink and blue and yellow and everything we're showing today. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the other really fun one we got in is Denim Revive. Yeah. Oh, you didn't pick the pink and yellow blue No, I didn't. Okay. So they have, their, their colors are a little bit more muted because it's yeah. made from recycled This is a cotton, cotton obviously. It's yeah. called denim. Mm-hmm. Um, these little nuggets... I yeah. love. Yeah. Okay. And like, we have every color of this as well. Like giant sheep turds. So, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> if I don't say turd, our video won't get tagged accurately yeah. by YouTube. People won't know <laughs> what they're getting into. Okay. They're story. like, I thought this was a sheep podcast. Yeah. It says that on every episode. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this is made from recycled cotton jeans i guess yeah and it's i we, i always laugh when we look at the fiber content because it's a 95 percent cotton and five percent other god knows what because who knows what it is whatever <laughs> they make jeans out of now these days or whatever i don't know mm-hmm. i think we should get to try to get more of a story <clears throat> on that but that's literally what it says it just says other fibers yeah. It's kind of like no, our grizzly. Garfield Grizzly. Yeah. If you're allergic to anything, don't buy it. Yeah. That's how that works. So um, I think I'm going to make Ken a sweater out of this. Perfect. Yeah. But we'll talk more about that later. Yeah. We'll we can't do another later. slideshow. No, no, no. no. And we'll it talk. was in your, the sweater was in your. Yeah. It's from another, it's from a Martin storybook. Yeah. Coming up. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there's that. I really hope this has not been totally confusing. Yeah. So, so a lot going on. Okay. We're really excited. Two okay. new lines of yarn. Island Blend Fine, Blend Fine, Denim Revive, all colors, sweater quantities, no problem. List now, list it. Beautiful. All the new books, but for spring, no problem. And uh, <laughs> we have restocked everything else that we would carry for summer, like all the yeah. cottons and everything. Yeah. And oh yes, and Summer Light um, Four Ply, Summer Light DK. We got the whole line last year, and uh, with this spring order, we've completed the line of. Spring Summer light four ply as well. So right. we have every shade that they make. Right. And last time I checked, although it may be corrected by the time this goes up, the specs for what were required for like the Essential Brights book, for example, were not listed on Ravelry yet. Oh, okay. So, but if you, so if you think you want to make it and you want to buy the book and the yarn at the same time, just email us and yeah. we'll help you figure out what you need. Yeah. So that you don't have to order the book, wait for the book, and then get the yarn. Right. They may be on Ravelry individually by now, and if they are, I will certainly link to that in the show mm-hmm. notes. Um, because I think I, I don't know if I were you, I'd want to make the cardigan I'm making, <laughs> but you won't be able to order the yarn if you can't see the pattern specs, right? Yeah, so okay, so then, um, while we're on the topic of summer yarns, we should talk about the little Easter eggs, yes, okay, okay, grab that. So, piece of a paper. lot of uh, a lot of our um. Our viewers watch Arn and Carlos as well, and vice versa. Who doesn't? Yes. They're so delightful. So I purchased tape the other day that he put up on Instagram stories was so cute. Oh, I didn't see it. He does like vocal warm up exercises before they start. Oh, their podcast? Yeah. Who? <coughs> Arn or Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Carlos. Carlos. Is doing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so Arn and Carlos. <laughs> That, you know, yeah. high on the, what do you kind of call it? The riding the wave of their success of their Christmas <laughs> ball. <laughs> Program which nobody understood. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, there was only one pattern to choose this time. So I purchased the uh, dozen eggs and their cal for these starts today. Oh, wow. So they have a daily podcast for the next 12 days. Oh, my goodness. They're busy. Okay. Yeah. So they're going to do, <laughs> they're going to lay good. an egg a day. Oh. <laughs> okay. 
Which one? Yeah. Okay. So we have the yarns. Uh, this is the selection of yarns besides white is also right. part of the selection. So this I is... I was afraid to bring the white in case I got it dirty. <laughs> True story. <laughs> so the... Uh, so all of the yarns are the Summerlight DK, except we have the Lagostino from the Summerlight 4-ply in here because Cantaloupe in the Summerlight DK is the only color that we don't have. And, um... <laughs> it's a bit confusing. I feel like, d can we determine between now and Friday how many of these you need to do the 12 ball? Like, is it one of each? Oh, I don't know. Because I'd like to, like, put a little guy, like... I yeah. don't, I, it's confusing to have them go try to find the Lagostino on their own. Okay. So, um, I'll see if I can put it in a collection together on a page or something to make okay. it easy. Right? Okay, with the multiples of what they would need. Well, or even just, I'll just do a collection page so that they can okay. go get all, one of each of what they okay. need or however many. Okay. So, the Lagostino is almost exactly the same color of Cantaloupe, Summer Light DK, which is what they call for the pattern. Um, you use it for the beak of the, uh, I don't know if it's the first one. It's the little duck that's part of the collection. So you use it for the duck and the feet. Yes, it's the first one. New life. Cute. So there's a little, the little feet and the duck bill is made of this. So you use like literally three inches of it okay. for that. Right. So, and you'll hold it double. And you'll hold it double. You'll, it's not going to make a big difference. Then there is another one further back that is the main color is this. So you, I would hold just hold it double right. as well. Okay. So if you want to buy them all in okay. one stop shop. Yeah, I'll make can... a little collection page. Yeah. Just because you're buying mostly Summer Light DK and one Summer Light 4 ply that you have to hold double. Right. That's just a little bit confusing. Okay. So the link to purchase all of these is in the Easter Egg Collection show notes. There's a link below. Right. That was an incoherent sentence, but I think you know what I meant. Okay. Mm -hmm. So fun, and it starts tomorrow. Today. Today. So you will have only missed it by two days by the time yes. this goes up. Yes. And does that mean they have to make two eggs? Yeah, well, if they're not caught up. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> no, I'm already Well, behind. they won't even have the yarn. Yeah. Do we have lots of all of these? I think we do. Yeah. We're not going to run out. No. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. So that's it. We got you covered. <laughs> I mean, this is bigger than the fall knitting extravaganza. Yeah. Like, I don't even know where to begin with all this that we've got here. Right. Okay. All right. Don't adjust your set. <laughs> now you know how old I am. Old. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not you, it's us. Yeah. <laughs> so we finished the video and we realized that we forgot to talk about two things that we wanted to talk about and then something else happened. So now we're inserting a piece that we're there's doing the two, next morning. There's two things? Yeah. Are you going to remember the second one? Because yes. I don't even know what that is. Yes. Okay. So, um, so this little snippet here has been inserted <laughs> somewhere into the main podcast, which we don't know where it is yet because Jennifer's going to make a decision. The editing in the editing suite. Yeah, the executive producer is going to make a call. On yeah, that. yeah. So, um, but the first thing that we talked about, oh, we're going to hear more about that later. More about that later. When I was talking about our Irish right ancestry yeah and then we never went back and we did that on something on the last podcast as well but it was something minor so i i yeah what was that i don't know do you I want to talk about it now no <laughs> <laughs> probably supposed to show a picture we'll show more on that later yeah. anyway what i was going to say about that was that um ken and i and my parents or our parents went to uh ireland for three weeks in i forget what year it was i for, i forget Anyway, the, uh, we went to, um, we made a loop all the way around the whole island of Ireland. So we stuck to the coast and went all the way around. And um, we went to, my father had done some genealogical research and the Doherty's, the original family seat or whatever, as I alluded to earlier, was in Donegal. So we went to Donegal and um, Doherty is not really that common of a name. A lot is more common now than it was, but I can remember when well, we yes, moved we to Halifax. Multiplied. Yes, <laughs> like most when, families. Uh, we moved to Halifax, which would have been like in the seventies. I think there was only seven Doherty's oh, not in the even. whole. When I was whole. a kid, there were two us and our yeah. uncle. Yeah, there is Halifax. a guy that owned the newsstand. 
Okay, he was a well, Doherty too. I mean, yeah. there was hardly any. Yeah. And nobody knew how to pronounce it. It was always Dorothy. Oh, yes. So Dorothy painful. Was crazy. This is why we always apologize for mispronouncing things. Yes. Dorothy yeah. is not our last name. No. And Dorothy. Or our yeah. first name. <laughs> <Right>. so, <laughs> oh, just to make it even more confusing. Yes. All I think about when I hear Dorothy is the Golden Girls. Right. Anyway. So anyway, <laughs> the um, so we went to Donegal, and I can remember my sense of awe and amazement that half the buildings in the town businesses were named Doherty, Doherty um, Pub, Doherty Pharmacy, Doherty whatever. I was like, it's like Gillis is around here. Yeah, it was incredible. <laughs> so uh, that was all that I wanted to say, but we never went back to say it. Oh, okay. However, there is one other point that I want to okay. make about that is that we went to the Doherty Pub. So people from um, the UK and and Ireland and Wales and stuff, I think it's the same almost everywhere you go there. There's um, there's small pubs in every little... Every or anyone little... who's ever visited any of those places. Yeah. yeah, yeah, small pubs everywhere. So this was like a small pub. I think the, the um, what do they, are they called? Publicans? The pub o- owner? Public houses? Oh, oh I don't know. Uh, yeah. I they call it their called. local. Yeah. He lived upstairs, so you get, and the pub was on the yeah. on the main floor, and you and it was the Doherty Pub, and when we went in, the the four of us went like this and stopped because the guy behind the bar <laughs> was the spitting image of my uncle Andy. Fascinating, very fascinating. You should have taken a picture. I don't know what you were thinking. We might have a picture. Oh. So, <laughs> I don't know, it was so, we just all went like, wow, okay, so that's, the genetics are, are <laughs> he was just, uh, it was really funny. But Andy doesn't look like anything like the rest of us. Well, no, but the, obviously, the genes that got in, okay. in on his, yeah, are they? I care, clearly got much more of the German Oh, yeah. Sign. Well, no, no, I'm having it. It's yeah, like, I don't know. It's a good yeah. mix, I think. Yeah. Anyway, so that uh, so that was the story that we wanted to tell. Okay, there were Doherty's everywhere. I forgot about the Andy part. Yeah, and then what was the other thing you're going to remember? Oh yeah. Oh yes, <laughs> uh, the Eleanor. We wanted to give an update on the oh, Eleanor. Right. So we just talked about it ten minutes ago. Yeah. So already. the uh, <laughs> it, as it happens, after we recorded yesterday, Andrea and Andrew gave an update, yes. a health update. So that reminded me that we forgot to talk about our donation. Uh, well, not our donation. It's Susan's donation. Yeah. And our match. Susan Clouston and yeah. we'll match her do- her donation. So so far we're running that uh, all of the one hundred percent of the pattern sales that are coming um, up from the Eleanor pattern that was generously um, made donated by, by Susan. Yeah, donated by at Susan. her at her behest. Yes, that's her, <laughs> that was her request. Yeah. So um, all of the one hundred percent of the pattern sales are going to Andrea and Andrew. And right now um, we said we'd do it for the whole month. So at this point right now we've sold forty six patterns for Susan. Yeah, Susan's pattern career is off to a bang and start. Yeah, four hundred flip mitts. Oh no, it's way more than that now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the flip mitts. Six thousand flip mitts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was a, a lot of flip mitts around. I think so. They're, they're still coming. In. Yeah. That's a free pattern that right. she that she made with our yarn. So um, yeah, so we'll be matching that do, that donation. So okay. that's coming along nicely. Good. Yeah. And since recording last night, yes. I've re-swatched my flax, right. which is knit in our Selkirk worsted, and my my swatch is sort of finishing drying upstairs. But I've already measured it. Yeah. I've already recast on. You might have to do this all the time now. What's that? Record the podcast. <laughs> yeah, because and then the next day I mean, record everything that listen, we missed. This is life in the knitting fast lane. Yeah. I mean, this is how <laughs> this happens. So Doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> yeah. So um, I have to go up from a four and a half to a six. Yeah. Okay. That gave me 16 stitches for every four inches instead of 18. So the stitch gauge is still a little bit off. I'm going to go down a size to compensate that. I've done all the math. And in fact, the size that I end up with has a little bit less ease than what I was going to knit for him, which I'm more comfortable with because it was getting a little bit baggy mm. looking. So just be just to take it one step at a time because that's a lot of stuff. That, right. So if you're not sure what Jennifer's talking about, there is a st- um, adapting your pattern to right. your stitch gauge video tutorial so right. you can check that if you want to know all the details Beautiful. of that yeah, yeah I was going to have the math prepared for next week but I didn't know we were recording this this morning yeah. so it's not I don't we're, we're on, on the my fly. whiteboard out we're yeah. doing it on the fly life in the knitting fast lane um 
so I so the stitch gauge is not perfect. The row gauge is still not perfect either. So the um, pattern wanted 22. I'm getting 26. But I did all the math, and that basically uh, uh, results in me having to do a raglan increase every two and a half rows instead of every two rows. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go do one every two rows and then every three rows. Every two rows and then every three rows. Mm -hmm. And because my brain and life I'm going to actually record the row number in advance that I have to do oh, each yeah. of the raglan okay. increases on get out my row counter and do it that way mm -hmm. um, so that I maintain that pattern now the only remaining niggly problem is the stockinette part right so you we I thought we could do after. it in Tarja, but I can't because you only ever go in one direction. It doesn't matter how many balls I attach, they're all going to end up at the wrong end of the knitting. Every oh, time, they're all okay. going to end up at the wrong end of the knitting. You're so used to knitting flat. Yeah. It, it's just, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to purposely uh, knit it as tight as humanly possible. Okay. Because my gauge is typically quite loose. So mm -hmm. if I really tighten up on my stitches and basically, or I could bring it over and Ken could knit those. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Every <laughs> round I'll be like, here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but basically I'm going to channel Ken yeah. um, for the stockinette part. And then about, I think, again, with a list of the number of row I have to do it on, every sixth row I'm going to slip it and then just reattach a ball like it's in Tarja. Oh, okay. I mean, if you've seen complicated in Tarja, like yeah. that blossom sweater. I mean, a bunch of ends. Well, or, if you look at the back of this. Yeah, or the I flat mean, rock, yeah. where literally there's an end every single row. Yeah, it's not a problem. Not a big deal. I don't want to do it every row. Yeah. Um, but I think if I take out a row <laughs> of stockinette every four or five rows, I knit it super tight, it'll be close enough that it won't be so wavy right. in the middle. And then, of course, I'm going to block it um, if I, if I, when I block it, I do, I didn't block it aggressively, but I laid it out wet, you know, and that does stretch it out a bit. So when I stretch it out, I'll stretch the, the garter part and just leave the stockinette alone and it should dry a little bit tighter. Like I'm not going to touch it, um, right. during blocking. And I think all of that will result in a smooth effect, but I mean, mm -hmm. this is really, now we're talking. Okay. I mean, this is really fun now, right? Yeah. I mean, I may end up having to do it yet again. I she don't. She hasn't ripped out the other one yet. No, but I'm definitely going to. I was just more in a hurry to start, and I thought, well, I could try blocking it. It's just a giant swatch at this point, basically. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm, I, it, was a, it was a fairly major modification. I just had no idea. I was completely naive about the row gauge aspect, right. and it turned out to be a huge deal. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm really kind of excited because we're going to learn a lot more from this experience than uh, we would have if I had just continued on right. with that. Um, there are a couple of things, like I said, that I was like, just leave it, carry on, um, that I wasn't super happy with. And so I'll be able to fix on all that. So I've gone up from a four and a half uh, to a six millimeter. There goes my ball. And uh, I think, I mean, basically it's going to knit up twice as fast. I'm going to be behind by three or four days tops yeah. by the time I get it done. And you'll be happier with it. Yeah, and I would have gone up to a six and a half to get the perfect row gauge, but honestly, it's going to be getting pretty loose. It's going to be almost like a so. bulky knit. Like the needle is just going to be too big for the gauge of the yarn that I'm mm -hmm. using, and it's going to really look like chain mail. There'll be actually holes in it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I'm sticking with the fabric I like, which is usually our, our go-to yeah. response for everything. Right. Um, but I do want it to be fairly close. So it doesn't overcomplicate it. Also, it'll make it faster to knit. Um, and, uh, it's, I actually do like the fabric a bit better, a little bit looser too. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Because it's just going to lay a little finer. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, I didn't know garter was so bunchy and yeah. compressed and I just, I didn't know. Yeah. So it's a huge swatch. Right. But I literally did The best swatch ever. I, I did. I literally couldn't even think of how to really fix it until yesterday when you were here and yeah. I, it came to me what I could do. So, you know, the problem in our life is that we don't, we, if we start something, first of all, I didn't understand what I was getting into full stop. Yeah. But then we just, I don't have the personality or the lifestyle to be like, I'm going to modify this pattern. I shall sit here for an hour and contemplate the way in which best to do this. <laughs> You know, like what might the <laughs> issues that I will encounter be take, like I just, I don't, I just don't do that. I don't mm. take an hour to slow down and contemplate before <laughs> I start something, anything really, mm. or I have to be forced. Mm -hmm. Like we'd have to actually set up a meeting. 
<laughs> it's just the pace of, of uh, everything we're trying to get accomplished in, in a daily on a daily basis. So I have learned it the hard way. It yeah. was either it could have been an hour of contemplation, or two weeks of knitting. That's it's a trade off. That's how that goes. Yes. <laughs> in this case, I really. Got but burned. in fact, you might not have even figured it out until you actually saw how it worked. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would not have even thought about the row gauge. I mean, yeah. if I if I hadn't measured row gauge in my swatch, I was a non starter. Yeah. Yeah. Like. So, you know, from now on, I will actually count it. Yeah. Well, so that's really, it's important on raglan and shaping. Well, and I, but I mean, I think on every project, like, it's, it's a thing to know. Like, yeah. I mean, you may not adjust for it, but you should probably be aware of it. Right. I mean, I never even count it because I know I don't want to change it. So what am I here? Mm-hmm. So I thought. Uh, so anyway... So that's it. I feel like I'm going to uh, knit this little teeny tiny ball that I've cast on with here. And then I'm going to knit from the old sweater. And I will, because that'll be really interesting, because I will bet you I will almost be able to finish the sweater with the amount of yarn I have in that oh, sample I knit. Wow. Okay, great. Yeah. Like that will be interesting. Yeah, or, or a good, it'll be a lot more for the amount of yarn right. that I put into it. Right. Yeah, and I think it'll just look nicer and tidier and cleaner. Yeah. And, yeah. So the only thing that I would say about that is that did you watch the end of the Suzanne Bryan? <laughs> no, I think I watched the first four okay. or five. So the last, uh, the last, I think it's the last episode with all the conclusions is that she shows really good examples of reconditioned yarn, meaning just right, okay. soaked yeah, and yeah, made yeah, with yeah. it. And then she soaked and blocked the swatches right. of the yarn that she right. re- reconditioned. I actually was didn't. wondering about this. Yeah. Yeah. So your thing hasn't been knit at that long, right. so it will probably might be less, uh, and you haven't blocked it yet right. or anything, so it might be less important. But um, you should take a look at that. Well, no, tell me the aunt. Tell us. Well, you she undid the swatches, and then she knit it, re knit it the new swatches right. without conditioning the yarn, right. and then she conditioned the yarn, right. reconditioned the yarn, and then re knit the swatches. And she said, so they obviously don't look the same because the unconditioned ones were all bubbly right, and whatever. Right. So she said, but I don't know if it's going to come out in blocking right, or not. Right. So she blocked it and it doesn't come, it doesn't really come out. It improves a lot. Right. Right. But they are still, it's still kind of. Uh, so is my concern how it looks or the gauge? No, it's the, how it looks. Oh, okay. It's because, uneven. So yeah. with garter, it might be less right. important. I think yeah. And literally, if the gauge was different, then I'd be like, yeah, definitely I don't, soaking I, it. I don't think the gauge was different. Okay. I think it was just the look of it. Right. Like it, it and it was stock and net. Yeah, it won't matter so, for this. But. And and it's not been knitted up this long. Like no. when she, by the time she, she undid the swatches, it, times it looked like and... a bunch of ramen noodles. Right. Like yeah. it was, uh, it was really like tight yeah. and cording. And it's so. a loose, relatively and loose. I, actually didn't recondition the yarn when I did my redid my paisley right. which would have been more of a of a problem but I reballed it and I yeah. think and then I set it aside and yeah. by the time I went to knit with it um it was already kind of flattened out yeah so uh, yeah. I guess it just depends but I mean then. either way I'm going to use what's in the sweater so yeah, it's still going to my experiment's still yeah. going to work but if it's if it was a gauge issue I was going to be no, like no. all right well no 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 it wasn't I, can't, I don't think just it was a, it wasn't looks, a really so a gauge gonna... issue it was just the look of it all right but you're not knitting a smooth fabric anyway no. so no if yeah. I could see it if it was stocking it for sure but I'm not worried yeah. about this one this is so bubbly I mean it's right. the texture is the name of the game with this yeah and the okay. yarns a little bit bubbly. Yeah. Because I am knitting with seconds that yeah. we rejected. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, but it'll still look lovely. So. All right. Okay. Well, so now are we back done to, now? Back to regular programming. Yeah. <laughs> if we think of anything else, it'll be on the next episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So ask us anything. Okay. Somebody wrote about, and then they sort of retracted their question thinking it was silly, but I don't think it's silly. No, no. It's a good question. I thought so. It's a good one for you. I'm a one trick. <laughs> I'm a one trick pony when it comes to this. Okay. I mean, I don't even do the left and right. I've I just, do. I've just had this happen just last night. In fact, okay. making a decision about the right make one to okay. use. Okay. So sometimes in patterns, everyone's familiar with M one make one. Right. Sometimes they will indicate what type of make one they want you to use right. because there are left leaning and right leaning make ones. Yeah. In these terse times with the British <laughs> European patterns where they don't really feel like giving you much information, <laughs> you often just get M1. Right. But there's right leaning and left leaning. Yep. It's a bit irresponsible. 
Okay. So I, I think it is a good question. Yes. So what do you do? Okay. There's a couple different ways to make one. So there's the the make one, which is a thing in itself. And which one, is what? Okay. So take the ladder traditionally in it's take the ladder in between. Okay. And um, so, as you know, I use words to keep things straight in my head for different things. So when you make one right, it it leans to the right, then you're going to pick up the um, the ladder from behind on your needle, and then you knit into the front with an R, right, right. to make a right, right leaning. Front. I think we've talked about this before, but it's right. good to cover it again. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, you do that. And you, the other thing that you get will help you, because sometimes that, that make one like that makes a hole. But if you're, um, it's, if it's easy to put your needle in, you're, you're putting doing it in it the wrong, wrong place. Yeah. It, sh- it twists yeah. the stitch. Yeah. So, and then if you make one left, you pick it up from behind and then you knit into the back loop. Yeah. You purl? So no, you knit. Okay. knit, but into the back loop. Okay. But it's it's hard to it's hard to get Yeah, because there's a little tiny lip of thread and the rest is on the back. So it would yeah. be easy to So I had to do that with this. You knit through the small part, essentially yeah. so, is what's and happening. What I had to do with this one actually is <laughs> I took the because I'm knitting with Chiago needles and the point is really pointy, I would pick it up and then I would hold it slack on with my yeah. thumb on the needle. So I can right. insert because this is so fine. And yeah, I had to make a thousand. It should of be them. tricky to insert it, or you're doing it wrong. Yeah, that's right. So you, yeah. um, so you, so that's uh, make when one you knit, right. Knit through the front with an R. It's right, and when you knit through, knit through Pick the back loop back. with yeah. that L, it's left. So, but there's still other types yes. of lifted increases and all kinds yes. of things. So okay. last night I was working on my paisley and I had to make an increase and you had to make an increase in pattern. So this is also tricky because your increases in pattern, you want to make sure that um, when you make your two stitches out of one, that you can see the, the pattern the right way. Because sometimes when you're making one or in different ways, one of the stitches covers the other one. Right. So what I actually found... Um, and I had, this is actually the first increase that I had to make in this pattern because you, you go from the bottom and you're decreasing first for the waist and now I'm increasing. And I have that checkerboard in the back. So I actually made one increase to stitch by knitting through the front and through the back loop. Yeah, I use that a lot. Actually, a lot yes. of patterns knit one front and back. Yeah. Yeah. So in this case, you've got that checkerboard. You've got two... Um, of one stick stitch and one of the other and I had to make an increase right in where the pattern changes so I knit the front loop with one color and the back loop with the oh, other wow. color so that's a KFB yeah okay yeah. so that's what I did with that okay but 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 what about the fact that the pattern designer doesn't care whether you make it right or left leaning what are they well, thinking I, I don't know <laughs> they it's just like whatever because if given my, if I have my choice, I'll always do the one where you go through the front. The make one? Yeah. Right? Well, the one where you go put the needle from front to back. Give me your sweater for a second. I just want to make sure that we're talking about the right thing. No, no, I am. But okay. I'm just saying, like, if there's a lean to it, then how are you not telling people? Is it in the edge? Of the, like, well, often it is. Okay. But even still, I do, and I'm always careful to do them like that on my I just my think sleeve. it's irresponsible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always Because you want your sleeves, uh, if you see how this, uh, you nobody will be able to see it there, but you can see that I've made my increases so that they're all consistent. Yeah. So it makes like a so little So if pattern. they don't tell me, I do this one here or wherever, and then I go through the back. Or no, I just did that wrong. <laughs> yeah, I like this one. Sorry, I do the one where I go through the back. And I think that's a... And then you that's knit through the right, front. Yeah, that's a right leaning. Yeah, that's right. right. I always do a right leaning if I have my drivers. Oh, okay. So all mine would be right leading because okay. I just, that's the way I like. Okay. That's the one I like. And then if you do it, if you do the other way, it's a little bit harder to pick up yeah, the... Yeah, that's why I don't do that one. Yeah. <laughs> so then you're going like this, in right into the back. Yeah. So in this case, this is quite loose, so right. it's not a problem. Don't worry, but... it's all being ripped out. Yeah. <laughs> But this was this was tight, like the knitting was quite tight because I was trying to get this fabric. Yeah. So it's, you know, 
it's like it, it's like I read I actually read that somewhere if it's easy to do you're doing it wrong yeah the poor person that wrote though thinking it was a dumb question and it's actually no, not no no it's a very I've spent a lot of time thinking about <laughs> what what kind of increase We've do I want to make nights. yeah, yeah. Well. I mean and the KFB is one that I used uh recently too yeah. I think it's in flax probably oh okay so I'm using, I hardly ever use it. I usually do the make one right, make one left. But um, in this case, last night, it made sense to do the KFB. Yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. it's KFB in my raglan increases yeah. here. So you think I remember. Back. I only did them four and, days ago. And I had never been in a case where I had to change the color for the front loop and the back loop. But in this case, it, and it worked perfectly. Well, that it makes is, a ton of sense. Yeah. yeah. You, can, you can't see it at all. Right. It's like perfect. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, those are the basic KFB, make one right, make one yeah. left are the basic. Yeah. But I mean, people are out there thinking there's a make one. There isn't. There's not just a basic make one. <laughs> yeah. If you Google make one, you get make one R, make one L. Yeah. So, so make one yeah. is not a thing. I don't think so. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. They Unless assume, they just mean increase one, but they just assume you know which make one you should make, and yeah. I don't think that's necessarily fair. I because... looked. I must have when I first started knitting garments. I must have looked up that video. There was a YouTube. I just I googled it. Oh yeah, a thousand times. It's like the Kitchener stitch. <laughs> I have to print the Zen of the Kitchener stitch out every time I yeah. do it. And then you think so. you've learned it, and at this age, you've learned nothing. Yeah. I mean, two days later, you forgot. Well, that's why I always do some kind of word trick to remember. Yeah. Good luck with that with the Kitchener stitch. Yeah. It's a little bit too long for that, I'm afraid, although maybe. <laughs> yeah. If you really worked at it. Yeah. All right. So that's our rant about make one. Yeah. Okay. And then Yummy Girl asked uh, about sort of, you know, mohair, natural sock yarn versus uh, sock yarn with a wool nylon blend. Can we sort of like give a guideline as to how much tougher nylon is versus a natural? Okay. So no, <laughs> because nylon is plastic and it will never break down. Mm-hmm. It's there forever. Yeah. So no mohair will not last that long. I have I have <laughs> riding socks for horseback riding right. that are wool with nylon blend. Right. And there is no wool left in the heel, but the nylon is still it, it there. It will be there forever. Yeah. I mean, it's like it. Well, if I you, mean, you can wear it through, but it, the wool is all gone. But if the you nylon bury is still... an old-fashioned black garbage bag in your backyard, how long will it be there for? Yeah. That's how long the nylon in your <laughs> nylon sock yard will last for. <laughs> so it's not even going to come close. But if there's a natural fiber blended with that nylon, the natural fiber will still break down, and you're yeah. left with the nylon thread. And at yeah. that point, most people want to replace the socks anyway. Yeah. 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 So but I mean it does um the way that they're constructed like what's for for uh, for me personally what's important is the you know you can get a lot of good durability by the way the yarn is manufactured. Yeah. Also uh knitting it tightly. Kn- knitting tightly. I always go down a needle size. Adding the here. strand of silk which we recently talked about is a brilliant it's, idea because yeah. silk is super tough. Yeah. So yeah. kid silk haze yeah. is a good you can do that. That's mohair and silk. Yeah. So yeah. So but yeah, you can't you can't you But can't, you can also buy the nylon thread on a spool right. and knit it with whatever sock yarn you want. But right. the same thing will happen. The natural fibers around the nylon will, will break eventually down. Wear down. Yeah. yeah. But I think that the the perception that um wool socks wear out really quickly is a little bit of a you know We've talked about this before. How for us there are no bad wools, like there right. all the all the fibers, natural fibers are good. So there's no there's just and you know sheep's wool comes in a thousand different types of wool that you can get from the sheep. So if you're using super soft fiber in a sock yarn, it's gonna it's gonna not wear as as. Um, it's not going to be as robust as like cashmere sock yarn really nice for the first just three for, times you wear just it for watching tv yeah you can't actually like walk around in them yeah and it's like you know when we were doing uh some of the grizzly yarns and stuff at by times we're saying don't don't bother it's first of all it's not spun tightly enough but don't make socks out of it because it's got all these soft fibers and stuff like that they just won't hold up so when we're um we're picking the yarns like to go with our sock yarn. We don't use the softest lamb's wool that we get to make the sock yarn. 
Mm-mm. So Yummy Girl was also, had watched our prior episode and you had, had talked about twist in the construction yeah. and stuff. So that was part of her question too. Right. Um, like what do we do in terms of twist? Are you, I think you said you were consciously twisting it a little yeah. bit tighter to make it so tougher. But I'm, ultimately it's still natural, organic yes, yes, material. But they can, they can last yeah. like quite a bit. But mohair is hair. It's yeah. not... Uh, wool well, yeah there's a difference yeah so hair i mean think about you know it's tougher it's it lasts smoother. a long time like if you yeah. if, a, if a body was buried with hair the hair is there for <laughs> the a mommy, while the mommy still has hair <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah right yeah 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 so <laughs> the mohair yeah the mohair helps and the um the twist to help so just to, this doesn't mean anything to most people unless you're a hand spinner it would mean something but and i don't even know the controls on my machine the measurement is twist per inch but i'm i'm dubious that it's actually literally the twist per inch it's a measure of the tightness that it's uh-huh. spun but i'm not sure you can compare it exactly to a hand spinning when yeah. you talk about twist per inch but just to give you an idea our um, hand knitting yarns that we do for with 100% wool, I'm twisting at about, uh, on my dial, it's 5.5 twists per inch. That's about as tight as they go. On my sock yarn, I'm twisting over 7 twists per inch, and that's for the ply. Right. And then because the yarns are twisted more tightly, then they're also plied more tightly. So if I'm getting a finished yarn, um, like if you look at the the worsted, for example, you can see the twists, like in the, the right. way the two yarns are plied oh, together. Oh, yeah, it's quite loose. It's yeah. quite loose. So that makes it soft and bloomy, and like it, it, uh, it, it's very wearable. But in the sock yarn, it's it's... They're twisted yeah. together quite uh, Yeah, quite, I mean, a lot, too, when I'm, tight. like, skeining it or dyeing it, for me to even identify what sock yarn, I have to, like, untwist it and find the three plies. And yeah. that's how I know what yeah. I'm dealing with. Yeah. So it's quite tight. Yeah. Like, you can't, I can't see it. Like, yeah. I, I'm, I have to pull them apart. and like, okay, there's three. I know this is yeah. the sock yarn. Yeah. So that's how we make it more durable. But it's not, they're not going to last forever. So, you know, then you learn how to darn. Yeah, that's another fun, or just knit another pair of socks. But yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no contest between a plastic and a natural fiber. Yeah. But hair is more sturdy than wool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and um, some wools are more the coarser the wool, the more sturdy it is mm-hmm. versus other finer wools. And these, uh, you know, it's my personal opinion, but because they're lovely, when you 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 know, there's so many nice, beautiful, fancy sock patterns and right. stuff. If you're wearing them in your work boots for for farming, forget it. Like the cash a sock yarn with cashmere in it, it feels like you knit socks out of a sock yarn with cashmere. Yes. Yeah. For Ken, they're beautiful. How, how are they doing? They were beautiful. <laughs> I knit some for Danielle too, and I think they lasted not very long. No, it's the, but boy when they and were, it had nylon in it. Yeah, and but they were lovely. Yeah. So those fancy those fancy um um. Uh, some of those fancy yarns they're yeah. meant for fancy socks yeah. not the socks that you're going to wear every and i know we've day. talked about this before too because i've also knit several pairs of boot socks out of a, a sock yarn from knit picks that yeah. was 30 percent nylon yeah and they're you were wet. knitting a lot of socks i knit of like those. three or four pairs of yeah. them for inside my boots and they were thick mm-hmm. they will last forever but they're cold and sweaty yeah so, so you're putting your foot in again a plastic bag yeah. like if it gets over 10 20 percent nylon 20. 20 is kind of what people say it's okay sort so of this the, was 30 and yeah. they were cold and sweaty yeah i mean the whole idea of wool socks is the thermal regulation mm-hmm. so why do i want wool socks that i'm going to sweat in mm-hmm. that doesn't why am i like because remember these are a tool for us yeah Like, we're out in rubber boots 365 days a year. Yeah. I'm not wearing sweaty wool socks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, there's just no point to it. It doesn't... There's a reason why we've gone through this. Soldiers march in wool. Even in Vietnam, it was hot. Yeah. They still had wool socks. Yeah. They did not have nylon socks on. They... We've had no feet left whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So, we kind of look at it a little bit differently because it's a functional tool. Mm -hmm. We're not just wearing them bright colors, yay... And I whatever, have a, so. I have a pair of uh, wool socks 
uh, their mohair socks actually. Right. And and uh, they're expensive. I mean, what would yeah. you have paid for those? Uh, well, I don't know, forty five bucks a pair. Yeah, or for a like pair that. of socks. Yeah. Because. Yeah. They work. Yeah. Right. And I'm wearing. The, I've had them a long time. Yeah. Now, what I do put on. Um, another pair of thin wool socks over top of them because the mohair is really what's keeping my like that's they're quite dense and th- those are the the socks that I want next to my skin and then I buy this, this is like cheap cheap 100% wool socks that you get a I don't know. They're not expensive. Ken picks them up for me. Mm-hmm. And I wear that wool sock mm-hmm. over the mohair one. They wear out. Is that but, the gray with the purple? Yeah. Yeah, they don't last very long at no. all because they're also very loose fitting. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but I'm wearing them every day, so they still yeah. they last they last yeah. all right. But then I protect my my really nice, and I I think I've worn them every day for five years. Yeah. So I had dogs terriers. Yeah. Prior to this year, two or one, depending. Uh, I now have none, but uh, that like to chew socks. Mm. So I had one pair of icebreakers, wool, one icebreakers wool sock left. <laughs> I started with four. I had one and I thought, this is a $25 sock. Yeah. Like those, by the time I get them shipped, they're $43 a pair. Yeah. So am I going to keep this one sock forever and throw out 25 bucks or am I going to buy two more? <laughs> And then have three and possibly get some wear out of it. So I went and bought two more. No. They're on their way. So I'll now have three instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure. Like, you can rotate them. If something, yeah, I'm just basically going to rotate them. Because mm. I can't, st- I don't want to throw out the $25 sock that's no. perfectly good. But the dogs chewed holes in the other yeah. three. Yeah. So now I'll have three again. And they were literally $43. And they stood the And the reason... I'm doing that is because I want the 100% wool yeah. sock. Now, they're actually not 100%. No. They have a little something in them for strength. Yeah. Um, but not more than 20%. No. And, uh, yeah, it's ridiculous what they cost. Yeah. But it, they will, if the dog doesn't eat them, I'll probably be able to wear them for several years. Yeah. And Jennifer did was doing her test on our right. hair socks. Yeah. It, but never completed it. I know, and people are so annoyed with me because yes. I've said so many times. But eventually, she did, I'll, I'll. She did wear it. them, and you could, there wasn't a mark on them. Yeah, like, so there I did wear a, them for nine or ten days straight. Yeah, in, but I mean, the other thing is, I wear boots. them for chores. It's like an hour and a half, and then I take them back off. Yeah, I'm not. I can't wear them in my. I don't wear them Regular in my shoes, shoes to go yeah. to work. So yeah. it's not probably a fair test. But I mean, it's they're as good as they are. Yeah, and then they're not. But they're not plastic, so they're yeah. not going to last as long yeah. as nylon. Yeah. Yeah. And I personally, um, you know, you, what you alluded to before is once the, the wool or whatever the other fiber is. That's yeah, like I'm wanting to, the, <laughs> these pair are actually not bad, but I have plenty of cotton socks where there's nothing but the nylon left. Yeah. Well, I don't like yeah. wearing them when they're like that anyway, so I throw no, them out. No, I mean, they don't, so, the, the nylon lasts forever, the sock doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Because there's other stuff around it, unless right. you buy a straight nylon sock, which... Then you're, you're yeah. four feet. Yeah. I hope you don't have any sweat glands <laughs> down there. It's going to be like sliding along. In the... uh, so anyway, that's, hope that that's wasn't it. too. So if you're, if you're going to buy, uh, if you're going to buy a sock yarn and you absolutely want nylon in, try not to go more than 20%. And it's a little bit hard to find. I what? find like they like the 30% for the price point. Yeah. So, like, to try to find even a wool blend sock, like the icebreaker style of sock, or go spend a lot of money investing in a good wool or yeah. mohair sock, they sneak the nylon in there because wool is expensive. Yeah. And they probably don't want them to wear out. You know, yeah. they want to give you... But you do have to be careful about the percentage because if it's 30, they're sweaty. Yeah. It starts to... And it just negates the whole purpose of having right. any wool in there whatsoever. You right. might as well just go buy a pair of cotton nylon mm-hmm. socks. Anyway... That's the story of that. We always have so much bad news for people. Yeah. It's so bad. It's complicated. But I mean, nobody knows wool socks better than people who wear rubber boots for a living. All right. Yeah. Or appreciates them. <laughs> yeah. So and, you know, some of those, uh, some of those, um, like old fashioned socks that people were making out of the, you know, the mills that are still, the mills that are still running, like Briggs and Little right. and, and McCausland's, they don't wear out. Yeah, like, but you have if to you knit, knit them, them tighter tight. too. You have to yeah. knit tight as well. Yeah. So I always go down uh, at least a size from the recommended needle size as well yeah. when I'm doing socks. So yeah. and I've knit pairs that literally yeah. you could, 
prop them up, up like because they're the but fabric like if they're is so loose dense, and they're rubbing on your Achilles tendon they'll wear out really quick yeah yeah they have to stay so. put they have to stay snug they have to fit well and they have to be knit densely yeah that's a good otherwise I've knit I mean way back my very first thing I ever knit almost was a pair of uh boot socks out of our air and weight yarn and it was a particularly <laughs> soft batch and I wore them out in a week yeah I had a hole because I have really bony feet <laughs> I had a hole at the Achilles tendon within a week. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They were loose, then you knit them loose. They were and loose, they... and I knit them loose, and they didn't fit, and they were not really not soft. And loose. they were, yeah, yeah it was a, an air and weight yarn that's twisted. Not, you know, I just, yeah. and I was like, wow, that was a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> for seven yeah. days so. so it just depends and then you know this is this is not to diss sock yarns because in fact sock yarns can be used for anything mm-hmm. like any excuse me but you're um so you know there's lots of nice nice sock yarns that are probably better for something else <laughs> Yeah, but you just wouldn't farm in them. That's no, all. that's right. I mean, we're just giving you our viewpoint. Yeah, wear what you want. Yeah, for sure. But yeah. for us, they're sweaty. Yeah, and we that's like, just like not appealing. Like one of the 100% best natural, one of the most like biggest sources of relief when you're wandering around in rubber boots in 32 degrees in August is your good wool socks yeah. that keep your feet from being uncomfortable. Yeah, that's like gold. Yeah. You know, no. so uh, and everything I'm, has, as we always say, all for yeah. the purpose of what it's. And I'm gonna guess like an army navy surplus store would be an excellent place yeah. to get wool socks. I, I would think. I had a friend that was in cadets when we were in high school, and uh, she said, "No, oh, I'm not wearing the socks that they provided. I forget it because they were wool scratchy, right. scratchy wool socks." Right. She said. It took two days, <laughs> and then she was back to the wool socks. Yeah, because she said it's like now I know why they want you because yeah. people think they're hot, but they're not hot. They're not hot. They at keep all. your feet warm in winter. Yeah, but they're not hot. They in, in summer. summer. It's yeah. the same. Like I sleep on my uh, on my wool. I use my wool blanket as a mattress pad all summer long. Yeah, because the heat from my body is just going through this wool and out the other. Yeah. Like it just it absorbs everything and dissipates it. Yeah. So that's, but we've talked about it so much. I feel like we're being a bit repetitive, but it's yeah. just, it's a tool for us. It's not a fashion, just casual relationship mm-hmm. <laughs> with, <laughs> so, yeah. with our socks. Socks are, are important. So. Right. All right, good. So, so I, I bet you didn't know that there was, uh, that we actually had some kind of a thing happening in the house this week. But the, have you noticed that the water has been sounding? Yeah. Yeah. It's cl- clunking. Yeah. So, is there a dead body in our pipes or something? No, oh, no. The pressure kept going on and off and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Something so, died in our well? No, no. Oh, okay. I'm so totally we called, nervous. So we called uh, the I thought he just changed the filter and so it... Well, he did change the filter as well. But okay. But that wasn't it. Okay. So I had a... Um, had a brainwave that is probably the pressure tank because we have a well so oh. we have a pressure tank to keep the pressure it's steady. a bit aged yeah well it's not that old i don't oh think, we got a new one yeah we okay. got a new one but i i figured i was praying that it wasn't the pump uh-huh that because heaven knows where right i don't i don't even haven't seen the pump right it's probably back from 18 yeah. 1950 or something right. so um again called tommy the plumber <laughs> and so so you know this is how it is, living where we live. Tommy said, well, I'm not sure what time I can come. I'll just, what, can you just leave the back door open and I'll come into the house? And I had no idea any of this was going on. <laughs> so um, so then Ken, uh, we were working and um, Ken came home. He was he was off on Monday. So he came home and we were working when I can't get in. I said, uh, Ken said, Tommy didn't come. I said, well, yes, he did, because the 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 pressure is working. He said, no, Ken said, I fixed it. I said, you fixed it. How did you fix it? He said, well, I went down to change the filter, and when I changed the filter, I realized that one of the shutoff valves was partially closed. Oh. So he said, I opened it all the way, so I think that that fixed it. So I said, oh, okay. 
was pretty sure it was the pressure tank, but whatever. <laughs> okay, I don't know how the got off. Valve would have fixed it. Anyway, so... How did it get half closed? So two days... Well, you have to close it when you've changed that filter. Uh, okay. So the last time you changed the filter... I'm so nervous right now. No, no. Okay. The last time you changed the filter, you must not have opened it <laughs> okay, all the way. Okay, okay. So I was like, but you changed that filter, like, it was quite a while ago. I think this pressure thing is happening. He said, no, no. He said, that was it. For sure, that was it. I said, okay. So... We, then the next day I said, well, did you call Tommy and tell him that he doesn't have to come today? Because Tommy had said he would come that day or the next day. So Ken said, no. He said, I better call him. So first thing, Ken get on the phone and he called him. And oh, he I said, know what's happening. Okay. <laughs> he said, so Tommy, I fixed the, I fixed the pressure <laughs> tank. You don't have to come. He said, I was already there. <laughs> Ken said, no, no, I fixed it. He said, I was there. I fixed it. It was the diaphragm in your pressure tank and I fill, refilled it. So I <laughs> didn't it. fix anything. <laughs> Maybe Tommy left the valve half closed. No, no, no. Okay. Anyway, Ken was like so disappointed that he didn't fix it. And Tommy was literally pissing himself off. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I hate to tell you, man, you didn't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I didn't even ask. I'm, I just thought he changed the filter and we had an air block. No. Okay. No, it's a little bit more serious than that. So right. the pressure tank does need to be replaced. So Tommy's ordering it. But oh it's, my uh, gosh. What does that cost? Not as much as you would think. <sighs> it's like, Thank goodness. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, I just don't ask funny. questions. That I'm like, funny. something died in the no, well or whatever. No, and no, no. Just, so that was okay. funny. It was more, I guess, Tommy's probably still laughing about it, so... Poor Ken. It's <laughs> good. What a sin. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, I'm on that now, I, now we're to, up <laughs> to the har- update. harmony part. <laughs> Which will be the sound of what? Our water running smoothly? No. No. You've got a choice. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You've got I have three a choice or four again. choices. All right. Well, we don't tell them in advance anyway. No, I don't and I'll, tell hope, you. I'll get to pick, pick the music and hopefully it shows up. Yeah. So the last one you picked was beautiful. I know, but I, there's only so many I can pick from that are free. So yeah. don't expect that sensation every time. <laughs> that was a new one I discovered. Yeah. Um, that uh, was definitely really nice. All right, yeah. harmony part. Here we go. Oh well, before we go to the oh, harmony right, part. Oh right, before we go, because we leave them with the harmony part. Yeah, we don't. Come I know. Back. We have more. So. Thumbs up. <laughs> okay, please give us a thumbs up. <laughs> do all the stuff. And do all the stuff. Um, Set your subscribe. Turn on your notification bell. Yeah. There's all kinds of statistics from YouTube. And the notifications, I think uh, it said bell notifications. Usually people click through 0.8 to 2% of the time or whatever. At last, this last episode, they were clicking through at 4%. Yay. Hmm. What about the Rowan slideshow video? I don't know. I didn't look at it. Okay. <laughs> well, our last video did quite well. Yeah. So everything you're doing helps. We're closing in on 8,000 subscribers. Oh, it's been a long slog. Definitely hit 10,000 by next Christmas. <laughs> 2021. I just feel like, no, not just a lot of 21, people. 21, 22. 2021, 22. <laughs> Winter um, 21, 22. I mean, we do want to grow the channel, so and I yeah. know people definitely did put the effort in to share with their own yes. uh, communities and networks, and we really appreciate it. And yes, I try to share you. them all on our uh, to our community too. Yeah. So and don't forget to tag your projects hashtag Please and Harmony because I go through there periodically and pick out your projects and share them on right. our stories and stuff. Yeah. So share and share alike. Yeah. So I guess we better go and get knitting after we relax with the Harmony part. I gotta tell you that I have some work to do this evening okay. on, a, on a side project and it's going to kill me not, not to, have... to restart that sweater <laughs> it's going to be all i can think about oh so i need to skedaddle all right. get my work done so that i can rip that sucker out yeah. i can hardly wait yeah good well i'm glad you're excited about it i i really am yeah i mean this is probably a shock a to eureka, some people a, a, a well i just figured mind. out hello row gauge yeah i might need your help with the math i'll be nervous about once the row gauge is right then I'll determine the size based on the stitch gauge because that's yeah. the circumference. Right. Am I right about that? Yeah. I'm going to end up knitting an extra small <laughs> and it's going to be done by next week. Yeah, great. <laughs> and on that note, enjoy the harmony part. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.